Hey guys, Steven here back with another video. Today I'm going to teach you how you can add fake fog in your photos in Adobe Photoshop using this new feature that they just added called Depth Aware Haze. If you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and also check out my Discord channel and Facebook group. It'll be in the pinned comment in the comment section. It's a great place to connect with creators. There's over 500 people in there right now. And yeah, with that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here are two images. I'm gonna explain why I chose these two images and what you're gonna be looking for in a photo to add fog. You don't wanna add it to you know just any photo. So here's a photo where it's dark, it has a light source. It is daytime, but we're able to add fog because there's depth in the photo. If there's no depth in the photo, um, it's gonna be clearly fake when you add fog. In this case too, it's darker. And the reason I chose this photo in specific is you can see like there is some sort of like fog or I don't, I don't really know what that is but you can see it in the air and also this image is very dark and the blacks are like very dark so i want to sort of soften the image up and once again this is an alleyway so there's some clear depth in the photo uh so the first thing you want to do before anything is you want to update your photoshop to photoshop cc 2021 it's the newest update and without this you won't be able to use this feature um so you want to go to filter and if you've updated your photoshop correctly there should be an option called neuro filters. So you wanna click on beta filters and right now this feature is in beta. So what this means is this feature is only gonna improve over time as they just made it and it's in beta. So it's just like really a test uh, feature right now. So if you just check it right now, you can see there's a haze and warmth feature. So you can see the haze pops up and, and by default, it will be like just white. It'll just be a clear fog, which is fine. If you're gonna use this in a cyberpunk type atmosphere or in a nighttime shot where there's a lot of color, you're gonna wanna move the warmth left or right. But for an image like this where it's quite neutral and it's daytime, and we don't wanna go for any like abstract colors, I think keeping the warmth in the middle is fine. The only thing I don't necessarily like about this feature right now is I wish that instead of warmth, it said color like we could have a certain color fog because right now, if you move it all the way to the right, you can see it's orange. It's like an orange yellowish color. And if you move it to the left, it's blue. There is no in between. It's either blue or it's orange, but obviously the in between is just white, but I wish there were like certain color fogs because it would make it a lot easier to just add it in a certain environment. I'm going to be working with this. So when you add the fog and you use that feature, that's just a starting point. But you can see it's a lot faded out now. So what I typically do with something like this is I want to add the punch back into the photo. I need it to regain that uh, contrast. So I can use curves or I can use brightness and contrast. I'm going to make an S curve. Typically, this is what you do when you want like uh, it to punch or stand out. And right now you can see it's super dark. So we're going to just increase the brightness a little bit. So um, the reason I chose this photo, like I explained before, is because it's light source. So including fog with it actually makes it like a dreamy, glowy effect. So if I actually group the changes we made, you can see what that does. And you can see toward the end, it gets grayer and it's darker. So this is actually a pretty good photo to use it on. And that's basically it. Just a rule of thumb, uh, when you do add the fog, you want to do some sort of changing with the contrast levels because it's going to be super flat when you add the fog and then and if you want to you can also change the color balance which i think gives a little bit more flexibility what than what they allowed with the warmth feature so this one um has more color involved and it's much darker um, i expect this one to turn out a little bit better um, so we're gonna go to filter neuro filters beta filters depth aware haze I'm going to increase it a little bit for this one. So you can see uh, where the haze actually came in. So they actually um, automatically use their AI technology called Adobe Sensei to sort of detect what the subject is. In this case, there's no subject uh, because it's like a landscape image. But you can see here, the haze actually starts where this wall starts, which actually makes sense. And you can see as it gets deeper, it gets more faded. I just wish it got a little bit smoother right here. Like you can see it's just a straight line of uh, fog. And in this case, this is actually where you would want to use warmth because there is like an orange light right there and there is orange highlights all over this uh, photo. 
So I'm gonna see how it looks like with uh, like a cooler tint. So you can see, I think this fits a little bit better. So I'm gonna keep it um, as is right now. So once again, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use curves. I'm gonna make that S shape. Um, the S shape is just what I go for. Um, whatever looks good for you when it comes to contrast levels, you can do that. And then brightness again, cause it gets darker after I do that. The only thing, once again, this wall is just not faded enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna use the brush right here. Make sure you have a, a brush with zero hardness. So it's like soft. So you can see um, that's how the brush would look like. If I had like a hundred hardness, it's just solid. It's uh, opaque, I think that's what they call it. So I'm just gonna make this smaller, um, like this big. We're gonna put it to the side right here and a little bit toward the bottom. And then we're just gonna lower the opacity. And there you go. So it's a very slight change, but it sort of evens out the levels of the photo. And then I'm gonna adjust the whole color balance. And then I'm just gonna do some basic uh, color grading. And there you go. So let's get, so let's show the before and after. You can see a big, big difference. You can actually see like, it actually looks like there's fog in the back right there. Cause it's a solid black background right here. And once we add the fog in, there's a lot more depth. So yeah, that's a quick and simple tutorial on how to do this. A lot of it is just using that haze filter. You will need to make your own adjustments as the lighting will become a little bit darker. So you'll have to add a lot of contrast and punch and brightness to it. Um, so once again, I'm going to show before and after. Before and after. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. I'm going to leave a Photoshop tutorial playlist in the description with a bunch of Photoshop tutorials. I think it's over 100 now. I'm also going to leave the Discord and Facebook group in the pinned comment. So check that out. And yeah, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.